My name is Mary Lowe, and I'm very happy to introduce our speaker, Dr. Robert Twilley. Before I describe his background, I'd like to give you a little perspective on this plenary. In January 2011, a grant was awarded to Project Kaleidoscope to incorporate real-world problems into the undergraduate STEM curriculum. PCAL is working with AAPT. These uh, issues uh, pertain to sustainability, such as energy, air and water quality, and climate change. They have created a resource collection to help us infuse sustainability into our courses. The grant work came to my attention when I was chair of the uh, Committee on, undergraduate, on Physics and Undergraduate Education. I'm not chair sure anymore, but the committee is still working on this grant. And one of our efforts was to invite Robert Twilley to be a plenary speaker. He agreed, and we are very excited that he is here today. Dr. Robert Twilley, um, known as Robert, is executive director of the Louisiana Sea Grant College and is a distinguished professor at Louisiana State University and the University of Louisiana Lafayette. He is an ecologist by training with expertise in coastal areas, global climate change, and computational modeling of ecosystems with engineering designs. Originally, when we were seeking a speaker for this meeting, we were trying to find someone knowledgeable in Hurricane Katrina and the BP oil disaster in the Mississippi. We found Robert and realized with great satisfaction that we found more than what we were originally seeking. We have a speaker with wide-ranging knowledge of coastal regions on a global scale and a deep interest in nurturing young scholars. Please welcome Robert Twilley. Great, good morning. Uh, this is a great pleasure. I, I, uh, the whole topic here of uh, using uh, physics or using real world problems to, to, uh, to teach physics is, is um, you know, and for me to stand on this podium and, and, and demonstrate that using uh, river deltas is, is pretty special. Uh, my most favorite high school teacher was my physics teacher. And I'm kidding you not, Evelyn Finch. And, uh, and, and, and Evelyn Finch, when she taught physics, I'm not, I was a jock, right, from Aiden High School in eastern North Carolina, thus the accent. And, uh, and, and the way she taught physics was she taught how a car engine operated. And in that car engine, she took it apart and taught us the physics of everything that moved in that engine. Now this is 1960-something, right? And my dad bought an Oval Cadet. And when I put a timing light in my hand and started playing with that engine, I knew all the physics that was going on, the Hewley effect and everything in the carburetor. So what I'm going to do when I was asked to give this talk is what I want to do is show you the physics behind a different system, not a car engine, but the physics behind a delta. And I want to talk about the repair and how you fix a delta, because basically and fundamentally it's all about the physics. And I found this diagram that uh, related to uh, 10 reasons why uh, people should get involved in physics, and I want to focus today on number eight, uh, which is uh, describing environmental uh, uh, aspect or, or describing how the world works. I'm going to focus on water. But I'm going to focus on water differently than what most people, because when you talk about water and, and science, this is the group that normally dominates, and that is the chemist. Because the polarity of water is the universal solvent, and so you know you can talk all day about the unique chemical properties of water. What I'm going to talk about is water on the continental margins, and water that flows from a region of concentration from precipitation and watersheds down to a small margin of the continents, less than 1% of the surface of the Earth, but have a huge impact on civilization. And those are deltas. These are the fertile crescents of the world. And this is where, through the process of water and the motion and the movement of water and the flow of water, has built landscapes that actually are as far as population centers, 
cultural centers, economic centers, navigation, oil and gas, as I'm going to show you the Mississippi River, are truly, truly some of the most precious pieces of the landscape that we have, and also are the most threatened. And so what we're going to start out with is this fundamental diagram, this uh, the watershed. And what I want you to notice in this diagram are there are three distinct regions in this watershed. The upper region is known as the zone of erosion. Makes sense, that's where a sediment particle begins. Then you have a middle zone called the zone of storage and transport, where that sediment particle continues through meanders of the river to flow down to the coast by the forces of water related to gravity to a zone of deposition where land is built. You're here in New Orleans. Uh, this land over about a thousand years ago was built as a major piece of delta. You don't get a sense of it when you walk out and see this urban center. But thank you, Iowa, and Missouri, and Ohio. Uh, we have New Orleans. So you own a little piece of this land if you're from those, those, those regions. So, this, so what we're going to talk about is the fact that rivering floods are the forces that bring the sediment that has built this landscape, known as New Orleans and other regions of coastal Louisiana. And, it, and, 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 and that landscape actually has really significant contributions to the nation. And we're going to focus the story of physics in this in the story that I'm going to tell, and and the way and the, and, the, and and to describe the way the system works is all about sediment, and it is about transport of sediment, and it is a transport of sediment in three very distinct regions of the watershed: zone of erosion, zone of storage and transport, and zone of deposition. And and when you think of a watershed. And you think of a delta and you're sitting here in New Orleans. Because of the three processes that I just described, New Orleans belongs to the nation. We are connected through our watershed all the way up. 31 different states, 43% of the lower 48 states. There's even some sediment that comes from Canada. And, uh, and in that watershed are these municipalities these regions. This is where people live. This is where economies and, and the agricultural belt. How many, if you look at this map in this room, raise your hand if you live in any one of these cities in the watershed. Thank you very much. So you're actually all part of us here in the, in the delta, and you're part of us because of the physics. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this watershed, and we're going to look at it from the perspective uh, this downstream zone, the zone of deposition. And in the slides I'm going to show you, but it's really critical, but what you, you can see in this zone, and it's pretty clear, I think, are two areas of light brown zones where sediment is being deposited out to the Gulf of Mexico. One known as Chafalai Bay, you see it to the west, and that's at the mouth of the Chafalai River. And on the right is the Mississippi Birdfoot Delta, which is the main stem of the Mississippi. And you'll see actually go upstream in a little white area there in New Orleans where we are right now. And those are two areas where sediment is being delivered uh, to the Gulf of Mexico. Ah, great, thank you very much. I knew there would be a laser in the house. <laughs> <laughs> so these two zones, and look at the color differential in this coast. And this clearly demonstrates the presence of sediment in these two areas and in these coastal basins to the west, to the east, and to the west of the Mississippi River are dark. And that basically is an example of the absence of sediment. So it is this zone that, is, that was built by sediment deposition over 6,000 years that has become a landscape that is of great significance to the nation. Just fisheries alone. Uh, this delta has the highest level of fishery productivity with the exception of Alaska. You'll always, when someone gives a talk from Louisiana, will always say in the lower 48 states, <laughs> Alaska has the greatest number of weapons and has the largest fisheries in the United States. But we're proud. We are the largest fishery in the Gulf of Mexico. We have a billion dollar recreational fishing industry. 
industry is not just commercial, we have a huge. Look at the license plate. What does it say? Sportsman's Paradise. It's on that license plate for a reason. And so we have extreme natural resources uh, in, this, in this area. And we also have um, an extreme natural resource that's associated not only from this upper part of our watershed here, which is in migratory waterfowl. We, are, we have more birds that, that land in the winter here to our, these waterways, to these flyways, than any other place uh, in the United States. I, I did my postdoc at the University of Maryland, uh, up on the eastern shore, and I, my family is actually from the eastern shore. And, and you know, you, you, you're from the eastern shore of Maryland, you're pretty proud of your ducks. Right, you really are. Your hunting is pretty, pretty. And so I, I moved down to Louisiana, and I had a fishery biologist tell me, you know, Robert, there are more birds that land in Calcasieu Parish, which is the county, right, one single bird, than the entire Atlantic Quadrant. So, so birds uh, and, and, and oysters are, are pretty big to us down here, uh, and I know they, as they are in Queens Estuary. We're also on the gas. This is a major center of our domestic uh, oil and gas energy uh, supply. Uh, this is just a drawing of the pipelines that exist offshore in coastal Louisiana. You've heard a lot about this, obviously, from the oil spill. But there's a tremendous amount of infrastructure in our delta that feeds the nation. And it feeds the nation. Here is natural gas supply uh, to the United States. And so we, we and, and when, I'm, when I'm not showing you, I have a, a slide, but we are also the offshore port for foreign oil that, that uh, is known as the Loop, Louisiana Offshore Oil Port. And that port actually is where the foreign oil connects and then gets distributed uh, in the United States. We are also here in New Orleans in this delta, the largest port by tonnage in the world. And what you see here is truck traffic by tonnage that's moving from the ports of Louisiana from this delta to the United States. So as in many deltas, our delta here in Mississippi has tremendous connections to you uh, out in the uh, community of our watershed as well as the rest of the nation. So those of you who raised your hand, yes, you're sending us something pretty important, which is sediment. We're giving you something pretty important back, which is oil and gas, tonnage that comes into our ports. So the way we sort of think about it in a watershed is that, yeah, sediment comes down upstream by the laws of physics. And then what we do is we turn around because of the delta and the occupation here, the Mississippi River, is we turn around and provide services back to the United States. So there's a neat little trade here, a trade of you send us the sediments, right? We're going to send you the services. Not a bad deal. And that was a deal that was actually conceived several hundred years ago. And I'm going to show you the story of the, the control of the Mississippi River that has actually allowed the kinds of services that I've just described. Now, let's talk about the physics of the Delta. The physics of the Delta, basically, I'm going to talk about landforms. And the landforms, again, I'm going to talk about the flow of water. And I'm going to talk about the momentum and how that flow of water actually transports sediments, as that transport of sediment that built that land and provides all the services to this nation that, that, we, that I just uh, described. And so fundamentally, again, it is these three zones. And the three zones of uh, erosion, depth, storage, and, and transport, transport being the key there, and zone of deposition. This is, this is the Roma Futro Delta, this is the Himalayas, Again, showing you this uh, zone here of where sediments are, are start, which is in the zone of erosion, the zone of transport through uh, a, a system, kind of a river valley alluvial uh, system that then transport that into a zone of deposition, which is the delta downstream.